Hey folks, this is part two of our French trip. Just to reiterate, we're in the south of France, in the Camargue area. So far, Kaylee had picked up six lifers and I picked up two. And today we were taking a trip to Maison de la Nature, which translates to the House of Nature. This reserve is free to enter, so we took one of the routes, which took us on a boardwalk through some marshes and eventually out towards a lagoon. This area was teeming with wildlife with the star of the show, the Greater Flamingo, being here in abundance, both feeding in the lagoon and a few flying over us. There were plenty of other species present too, including the Glossy Ibis. This one feeding very close to the bank, being reasonably undeterred by the people wandering down the path next to it. It gave us some wonderful views of this great iridescent wader, probably the closest I've ever seen. Another bird that was here in abundance is the black winged stilt. These seem to be so common in this area, regardless I never got tired of seeing them, and their absurdly long legs. After escaping the heat for a while and sitting in the shade, we headed alongside a larger lagoon, where there was little egret on the bank, and further out on the lagoon there were more flamingos and this pair of great crested grebe. Past the large lagoon the path took us round past a marshy area with some mud where there were more water birds including moorhens and some waders like common sandpiper and also the very similar green sandpiper. One little wader that was here in quite large numbers is the little ringed plover. A sandpiper species I didn't expect to see as these breed far north of Europe and winter in Africa was the wood sandpiper. These are often seen during passage and I thought this was a little early but was super happy to see this wonderful bird. While scanning through all the bird life on the mudflats, a small bird caught our eye moving around in the vegetation directly in front of us. It looked a little like a sedge warbler, but the call was different, and the bird was more heavily marked. Although not coming out in the open for very long, we soon discovered it was a moustached warbler. This is a Mediterranean species that was a lifer for both of us. Whilst we were here, Katie got a view of a rail-like bird with a red bill which ran in front of us. I stupidly dismissed it as a water rail and forgot about it until later. More on that in a bit. We carried on round the trail across another boardwalk which goes over a pool. On this pool, Emily noticed a little shape in the water. It was a turtle or a terrapin of some kind. Whilst I was hoping it was the European pond turtle, after some research, we suspect it may be an escaped species that's bred here. It was at about this time we walked past a sign which showed some pictures of some of the birds present, including the Western Swamp Hen, a reasonably large purple rail light bird with a red beak. This is when Kaylee said, That's the bird I saw. After the subsequent meltdown on my part, I left the girls to head back towards the car and I power walked back to the area where she'd seen the Swamp Hen. I desperately searched the area for a while, but with no sign of the swamp pen. There was a yellow wagtail, the blue headed form, and also this wonderful great reed warbler that was jumping through the trees. A little disgruntled, I headed back towards the girls. Kaylee saw a western swamp hen, which is like a purple, big purple, more henny like bird with a red beak. Uh, I've just gone back to try and find it, and didn't, so she's got one that I haven't seen. Um, I'm heading back to the car now because it's roasting hot, and we're heading off to the beach. The path that led to the visitor's centre passed some horses, and also a couple of trees and adjacent platforms where some white storks nest. They built some enormous and deeply impressive nests. Some of these storks were sat with their nests, and some feeding nearby. Later on that evening, I took a walk locally along the path where in the previous video I'd seen a lesser spotted woodpecker. In a clearing there was a patch of low vegetation that seemed extremely popular for small birds, with many coming down to feed including sarin and greenfinch. There was one small green bird here I didn't recognise. It looked like a warbler but was large. I waited for quite a while in the hope that this bird had come out in the open to give me a better look, and it finally did, letting me identify that this is a melodious warbler, and although not a lifer for me, one I'd only ever seen once before in Africa. 
Feeling happy with this, I headed back to call it a night. Having a quick conversation with Kaylee, who suggested the following morning, I go back to try and find the swamp hen. I got up reasonably early, leaving the girls to get ready, and I headed back to the house of nature. Hey folks, I'm back at the house of nature, or that's how it's translated from French to English. Um, I'm trying to find the purple swamp hen that Kaylee saw yesterday. I've got like an hour and then I've got to get back. Um, wish me luck. Oh, there's a little stream, by the way, next to me on the footpath. It's got some huge fish in there. I've just seen a catfish. It was enormous and a carp as well. Anyway, let's see if we can find this purple swamp pen. When I arrived, the gates to the trails weren't open yet, so I sat and waited. So I've arrived and I'm waiting for it to open. It opens at nine and it's about five too, so I'm hoping they're pretty prompt. When I got in, I hot-footed it past the flamingos to where Kaylee had seen the swamp pen. As I came to the path approaching the viewpoint, there was a couple of birds in front of me. Although at a distance, it was obvious what species this is. No other species looks like this. It's a hoopoe. These very unique looking birds have long bills, black and white wings and a peachy front. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any better footage than this because the hoopoe was spooked by a jogger. So I began the task of scanning the area trying to pick out the swamp pen. Many of the birds there were the same as last time with the small waders being in abundance. This time there was two little ring plovers that seemed to be having some kind of altercation. Eventually they ran off. I decided at this point to have a break from looking for the swamp pan and go back to the lagoon, seeing some lovely birds including exactly the same glossy ibis as I saw last time. I could tell this by the same white marking that it had on its head. Looking out onto the lagoon, there was a couple of cormorants that were drying off on some dead trees. In the distance, there was a grey heron, and yes, lots and lots of flamingos. By now, I was running out of time, and seemingly once again beaten by the western swamp pen. I headed back down the path, seeing the snipe by the side of the reed bed, and as I got back to the boardwalk, there was a cattle egret roosting on one of the posts. As I got further down past the cattle egret, a bird flew over my head. Initially I thought it was a bittern as it was dark, but further inspection showed it was a very young black crowned night heron. That was a first for this trip, excellent. Although I hadn't found the bird I was looking for, this reserve had really blown me away with many fantastic bird species and other wildlife too like the beautiful butterflies. Passing the noisy white stork colony on the way out, I headed on the path towards the car with a lovely close-up view of this sarin en route. I went to get the girls and we headed out to another place. I'd done a bit of research to find out where I could see collared pratting coal in the area as these are a bit of a specialist species here and they recommended this place. Although it was a very hot day and there didn't seem to be that many birds present, we did get a view of the collared pratting coal as one flew over our heads into the marshland. Unfortunately though, I didn't get any footage of it as it was a little too quick, but still, that's another lifer. Although we'd got the bird we were looking for, we were a little disappointed. We were expecting a little bit more life in this area, so we decided to drive and get a bit lost in the Camargue. This was a great idea and we got some amazing views of lovely scenery and a few birds as well like this enormous flock of egrets and spoonbills and ibis. We noticed whilst exploring this amazing area on the sides of the roads there were often viewpoints and screens to look out at the amazing scenery and wildlife. This was quite an adventure and as we were heading back I noticed something on a telegraph wire. I knew what it was, it was a bird that I'd been really hoping to see. Unfortunately there was nowhere to park. Hey folks, uh, we've just been driving, just mooching around the Camargue and we've just passed on a telegraph wire a roller which is a, a, a bird I've really wanted to see. Um, there was nowhere to park, so I parked half a mile up the road and tried to walk back. I've got some shaky footage of it, but that was a really, really exciting bird for me. And I like it for both of us. All three of us, in fact. After an exciting day in the evening, I headed back to the spot where I'd seen the melodious warbler, 
hoping to see it again. I did get another surprise in the shape of this young nightingale that was feeding at the same place, but no Melodious Warbler, the most numerous bird by far being Saren. There were tons of these little colourful canary-like birds. I watched the Saren and the Greenfinch here for a while, knowing that the following day would be our last morning here, as we had a long journey taking us back through France. As it was getting dark, I headed back to the Airbnb and called it a night. It's been a lovely few days in Montpellier area. Uh, we've seen lots, done lots, been to beaches, been to nature reserves. To the Camargue. Been the Camargue a couple of times, done some shopping, drank a lot of wine, you know, the normal French stuff. It's been nice. We're just going to nip to our local nature reserve one last time to say goodbye to the Mingos. And, uh, I'm going to start driving home. <laughs> head up north. Only going to take two days. <laughs> Only going to take a couple of days. We might see some stuff on the way. Stick with us. We made one last visit to our local reserve, the House of Nature. As Emily was eager to say goodbye to her turtle friends and also her flamingo friends. This reserve had been a real favourite for all of us giving us close views of a lot of the birds and wildlife in the area. And today was no different, with wonderful views of the wildlife here. The main reason we came here this morning was to say goodbye to one of the birds that we'd come all this way to see, the Greater Flamingo. This area had exceeded all of our expectations. We'd seen this species close, seriously close. It had been absolutely mind-blowing and given us some very special memories. It was hard to say goodbye to these birds, but we had to. And on the way back, we saw this lapwing, which reminded us of home a bit. We now had to leave the Camargue and head a few hours up north to where we were staying overnight. Other than a bit of a delay around Leon, it was a pretty stress-free drive. And when we arrived, it was evening, but this place was unreal. Hey folks, it's getting late. Um, when we've arrived in our overnight destination, kind of partway through our journey back to the UK, this place is so pretty. It's like a quintessential countryside French village. It is amazing. I haven't seen any birds, but it's very quiet. But wow, what a place. After a short wander, we called it a night. I woke up reasonably early in the morning because I wanted to have a little explore of this beautiful little French village. It was a gorgeous morning and there were hot air balloons in the air. I had seen a few birds and heard a green woodpecker. Suddenly though, I saw a bird land on a TV aerial. I had to try and get a bit closer to it to get any kind of shaky footage. It turned out to be a hoopoo, a bird we'd seen earlier in the video. I did try and creep a little closer to it to get better footage, but it then flew away. A little bit further up the path, I caught it again in the camera flying up and down catching insects in flight and eventually landing in a tree. As I walked back towards our Airbnb I did spot this linnet singing on the top of a tree but now it was time to go back and prepare for our drive up to Calais. Just as I was about to leave I did notice this bird on top of our Airbnb which turned out to be a black red star which was one of the first birds I'd seen on this trip which seemed strangely fitting and also one of the birds that was everywhere in France in huge abundance, the house sparrow. But it was now time for our last leg of our French adventure up to Calais. Hi. Hey folks, we have just got to Calais after a long, 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 long drive through the French countryside and uh, well, that's the end of our French journey. It's been gone too quick. Yeah, it's gone too <laughs> quick. Most of it's been driving. Yeah. Uh, but it's been amazing. We've got a load of lifers, or you've got more than I've I've got, got a lot of lifers. Yeah, I've got a couple of lifers. Wow. The vulture well, was the most shocking. Oh, the vulture was excellent. <laughs> un unexpected. Couldn't believe it. Excellent. So, well, we're going to get back to British birding soon. Hopefully we'll get to do a couple more of these in the next year or so. We hear there's a mega. Which we're oh, missing. Yeah. There's a mega, there's a great sand plover somewhere in Northumberland. So hopefully that'll stick around until next time we go. Thanks so much for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. And please press the notification bell. Tell all your friends, anyone who's birders, anyone who's not birders, get them birding. See you on the next adventure. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much, France, for such an amazing adventure and some incredible memories. Next video, we're back to our big year 240 bird challenge. See you soon.